A while ago, I had done this little project where the title of a YouTube video updates itself with the number of views. On a similar note, I tried using the Twitter APIs next to achieve the same effect by taking my follower count and somehow updating it in some other profile detail in real time. So this video is sponsored by Data. Data, as they say in their website, is a micro cloud. They provide a whole suite of cloud services that you might need while you are working on a web project, such as databases, hosting, sending emails, or setting cron jobs. If you are anything like me, you might have thought at some point of your career how developers are trying to simplify everything to improve the user experience with all the apps they create. Yet the tools that developers use are getting complex by the day. Data, unlike all other cloud platforms, exists to make development sane and fun. With data, you can go from project setup to deployment within a few minutes. You will see how this is possible in this video because I am using data to deploy this app. So definitely check out their website at data.sh where you can see all the cool products that they are planning to release shortly. Now back to the project. So the very first thing I did is to create a new folder named Twitter Updater. And as you can see, I have opened up the folder in VS Code. You can initialize a git repository in this folder if you want to, but I'm not going to get into all of that. Open up the terminal and initialize a new data micro. This is how we are going to deploy our app. So I do that by running data new node. This is to specify that I am going to create a node app and I name the app as Twitter. So as you run this command, you can see that a new folder named Twitter is being created inside your directory and you will get some information. This is the web address that you can go to to access your project once deployed. In this project, since we only have a backend, it doesn't matter. The only significance this endpoint has is that you can use it as the website URL when you're creating a new app from your Twitter developer console. So if you look into this folder, you can see that an index.js file has been generated for you along with a .data file. You can add this folder to your git ignore if you plan to push this code into a public repository. So all the code that we are going to write will be inside this index.js file, which we'll come back to in a minute. Now that we have created a new micro server on our project directory and got the endpoint, we can go on to the Twitter developer console and create an app there. So once you go to developer.twitter.com, if you're not already signed up for the developer program, you will be prompted to sign up, which is a really easy process. You just need to apply your Twitter account for developer access. And soon after you will be able to log in to developer.twitter.com with your Twitter account. Now, if you go to the apps section, you would be able to see such a dashboard with all your existing apps. If you haven't created any apps before, this section will be empty. Uh, since I already tried this out before, you can see the name updater app already listed here. So I just need to select the create app option here and it will ask for some details so that Twitter can verify that our app is legit. So it is here where you will be asked to enter your website URL. You can just copy the URL that you got after creating your micro and paste it here. We do not need to enable sign in with Twitter as we are not going to distribute this application to anyone else. For callback URL, you can just give your local host address for now since we are going to test this app. You can change this before you deploy your app to production. The other details like terms of service, privacy policy and organization details are not required. So you need not fill that. The final mandatory detail is how this app is going to be used. And this will be used by the Twitter employees to analyze your app. Give some kind of description here. So once you're done, just click create and you will be prompted with some of the guidelines. You can just click create again. So once you create your app, you will be presented with this app dashboard where you can see all the details that you just entered such as the website and so on. And you can edit these if you want to. Our area of interest is the keys and tokens tab. So if you go to the keys and tokens tab, you can see your API key and your API secret key. These two are important. So these two are needed to call the API from our server. You also need to generate an access token and an access token secret so that we can auth into our Twitter account. You can just click generate. You will be shown the access token and secret. You need to copy these down somewhere because you won't be able to see them again. If you didn't copy them down, you will need to revoke the current generated token and regenerate them. Now that I have copied down the access token and secret, I'll close that. And you can see from the app dashboard that the access level of this token is read and write. So you can use this to auth into our account and read information such as our profile settings, our tweets and so on. And you can also use this to write into your profile such as update your settings or post a new tweet and so on. Now that we have copied our API keys and generated our access tokens, we can come back to VS Code and start coding. The first thing that I'm going to do is to create an environment variable. So inside this environment variable, you need to store all the credentials that you just generated. You can use the data update command to set the environment variable that you just created into the server. 
now that you have all the credentials set up we can go on to create a node application inside our project direct first of all install express as express is being used in the boilerplate code that we generated with the micro and also because express is cool next you will need to install the package dot n this is used to load environment variables from your server so that you can use all the credentials that you just copy to the environment variable from inside your code set this by importing the dot n package and calling the config function now that that is out of the way we need a mechanism to call the twitter api from our server so there is this neat little npm package named twitter obviously that you can install and easily use the twitter apis install this package by running npm install twitter now that you have the twitter package installed using the api is pretty straightforward you can also refer to their documentation to explore the fullest potential of this package so let us start by importing the package so in order to call the api we need to create a client object with the twitter package that we just imported and somehow link our credentials to it this can easily be done as we have already saved all our credentials inside the environment variable so you can just call them by saying process.env.api key api secret and so on so once you create this client object you can easily call the get and post functions of the client object to access the api so you can refer to the twitter api docs and explore all the different apis that you can use with your project in order to get our account details we need to use the account slash verify credentials api and i am using the client dot get method with this certain api and i am checking for an error and if there is no error i am going to log the response that i am getting in my console so i'll just add a few more lines of code to be able to host the server locally in my machine and i'll start the local server by running node index so you can see that the server has been started locally and you can see that this prints out the entire response in the console which contains a whole lot of information you can do whatever you want with any of this information as per your needs but the only thing that we are concerned right now is this little follower count right here you can go on to print only the followers count and see what that returns you can stop the server and run it again and you can see that the follower count is being printed so what you can do now is you can call client dot post function and you need to call account slash update profile api in order to update your profile name you can create a params object with all the parameters that you need to change in your profile for now i'll just set the name to reflect on my followers count you are welcome to experiment with your creativity at this point now you can pass this params object to your post function and you can just console log a message in your callback function now if you start the server again you can see the message being printed implying that your twitter profile name has been updated you can go on to your twitter profile and check if this has happened for real so now i need to deploy my app on a server so that it runs repeatedly after a fixed amount of time only then will the profile name be updated with the followers count in real time so as you can see i have made a few changes to my code i have imported the app object from data and before creating the express app i have wrapped it with this function i also wrote a little function to turn the numbers into their emojis so that it looks good on the profile i dumped all the code that we used to update the name inside a function named twitter update and using data's function i have set a cron and inside this i have called the twitter update function now all i need to do to deploy this app is to run data deploy which will deploy your app on a server within a few milliseconds and then you can set a cron using data cron set and defining your time interval say 2 minutes this will schedule a micro and you will get a message that says that your code will now be executed every 2 minutes once you do this your code is live and you can see that your twitter profile name is being updated every 2 minutes all the code that i used for this project is in my github repo links in the description you can clone the repo add your own api keys and uh, deploy it to your own data micro you are also encouraged to play around with the code and modify it to satisfy your own twitter automation needs so as i said in my video about using the youtube api this is just a starting point and you can build so many things on top of it do share anything that you come up with and don't forget to follow me on twitter for more updates So until the next one stay safe and wear a mask